brother's family um, is over there, and he has three little children, and my sister's family, and she has one um, son. Okay, so you have a brother and a sister over there. Yes, right now. yes. Okay, so just talk a little bit about what you've been going through the last four days. Um, well, when that um, typhoon, um, they talk about, you know, we have to get ready because everybody knows it's coming to the Leyte. We'll attack Leyte first. So, um, as what I heard, they're preparing everything, and I'm texting my my um my sister my sister-in-law keep a lot of food and water because it's gonna be a big one in the history you know it's not gonna be like we used we used to i've been growing up with typhoons and it's just you know it's just kind of like normal to us because we get it but this time we always survive and this time is really a really heartbreaking and you know that the outcome to it and um so yeah i told my sister to to do everything ready and they said yeah we're all ready and then i also heard that uh, government is, government is also trying to prepare to or all those things if that came up and and now as what I was expecting that after typhoon, there not gonna be electricity. There not gonna be any signal, which is really expected, cause that's what also happened with the flash flood in our mock. And I was expecting that two days after that, then at least you know someone, a relief that's gonna be organized to get into our mock or any parts of Leyte, Samar, Tacloban, organize the troops, organize the reliefs to get into each uh, barangay, which is a little town. It doesn't look that way. Nothing happened. Two days after, three days after, I can get home with anybody. Three days after, now it's fourth day. It's the only time that I got home with my brother and my sister but not personally that, you know, some, you know, that I can talk to them. I asked my cousin from Cebu, begging that please find them because I can't, I don't know what's their situation, if they're still alive because Tacloban is the big hit and most of the media came from, tech, you know, went into Tacloban in Samoa and then left out Ormoc. Ormoc is just one hour and a half from Tacloban. So they didn't know what's going on in the other city. And so my, my cousin went over there and I told her to bring some food, a little bit of, you know, what whatever you can can bring. And so she went and she... I was I was just very thankful for her. She devoted a lot of time. She has to to line at three o'clock in the morning just to get a ticket from the supercut, which is our vessel that takes two to three hours so from Cebu to Orma, because it's very hard to get a ticket because a lot of people wants to get in just to check their own families so if they're okay. So when she get there. I thought I can get home with her, and and I still can't. So I have to wait another day because our time difference is, you know, if it's nighttime over there and it's daytime here, you know. So I have to wait until she tra traveled back to uh, to uh, Cebu. When she got there, that's what she told me. My sister and my brother were so happy to see her with those food, a little two baskets of food for the eight people to feed in the family because they are very hungry. Thank you, sweetie. And they were so, so happy that I, that she came and through me that she, no, that she, I'm sorry, she, 
she think that I am still here even I'm so far away and trying to reach them. My brother's house are all gone, destroyed, so he has to transfer to my mom's house, which is also my sister's living there. It's also damaged, but it's still livable. So all of them are intact there. And everything is so heartbreaking. And they told us that some of our relatives are in an evacuation area. And um, some of the evacuation area too, there's no roof. It's lots of homeless people there, ran. It's just lots of homeless people, roofless. And still raining. It's just so much. And then they're begging for food. Where's the food? Where's the government here? Where's the thing? It, nothing came. And then I saw, I saw some texting here in the Facebook through the Armok site and said, oh, um, one of the actors in the Philippines sent money to the, the, uh, uh, you know, to the city. And then all these uh, countries donating millions, millions of dollars and we don't still have any food. So the third day that she came and I heard that she said that it's very heartbreaking because there's only few people, just to family relatives that, you know, uh, came to uh, Cebu, uh, to, to Armok. Those are people only in the other sectors, the private sectors, charitable sectors that gets into Armok. To help Armok people. And we don't understand why can't the go you know, government do it in the third day or fourth day now. I'm not sure. That's going to be fifth day now actually. The fourth day they didn't still have any food. And there was one private boat. It was so frustrating. One private boat. It did not even reach to the, its the destination. Has the relief goods, not a lot, not, can, not cannot fit the whole thing. But, the, but teenagers are started swimming, started swimming from the shore just to get to be the first one to get that food for their family. It's hard it is. It's very hard, heartbreaking. And I just, I just can't imagine how hard it is to be, to be in that situation. We are so fortunate here, but it's too heartbreaking also because we cannot do anything from here. You know, it's just can. I mean, where's this billions of millions of dollars? The people, the troops, they can fly helicopters in there. There's a landing situation. They can fly. They can go from Cebu to Ormoc. Then Ormoc, you know, they can do if if the port in Tacloban is not gonna work. They can do that. It's just we just don't understand. We're like where are they where's the help no as why well, i heard that children are getting sick Sterling, and we don't know how much casualties right now because there's not enough communication not enough communication so it's hard it's just gonna have to look for for my family too and my relatives and my friends and the whole people it's like you know it's I just can't believe and how it's just how hard it is how hard how hard it's just there so now my my cousin went back to Cebu and then she also told me that the next trip because they were the the second trip that went over there or and she heard that some people some people are not even not even trying to ask to anymore. It's just like take the stuff, their family's food. But she did not actually experience that when she was there. So I was like thinking like, and each day, succeeding days, the Gaisano, the big department store, the Robinson's not open. There's lots of, you know, there's, a lot of a you know a lot of food in there there's not open there's few little little stores there's just open as only limit of 30 minutes they close again 
and then the prices went up. It's like double it. It's it's too you know people are already hungry and then is there double it and then it's it's so it's so heartbreaking and if they if they're trying to they're trying to clean up the uh, the dry you know the driveway to go to the other barangay so that they can reach the other barangay too, then people also taking advantage of situations like double triple the price. I mean, come on, you know it's just this is not human anymore. You know this is just not human. And then some people said that they they will just find a cat and to eat them. I mean, just to eat them. And some, and there's one advertised also over there that from Ormok, from Victim and Ormok, there is that my family is just eating, eating a salt right now, salt for my kids. So we can't do anything. Like, there's no fruits around it. It's all the trees are, you know, gone. It's no vegetables, no nothing. Is this we don't know on how to, how to reach. So, I know a lot of people trying to reach the private sectors over there. Cebu, Cebu is the main, main, um, main source of their help because they can't get through to Tacloban. Tacloban right now is really getting a lot of casualties. I mean, a lot. They are actually looting, looting the Gaisano now. Cause there's no food. I mean. It looks like it's like something like I saw in a movie. It's like in a movie. It's like, is this is this real for my home, my own hometown? It's like people's gonna be having civil war over there if they can't have any food anymore. I mean, you do everything you can for the whole family, right? It's just very heartbreaking. It's very heartbreaking. I just. I just wanted to just to, to to want to stop this and want the relief goods will be delivered medicine and be stable, you know. Filipinos are very hard worker people. Even for all the tragedies that we are experiencing, we always we always try to stand up and start start again. That's how we are. We're very hard worker people. So, I don't know what else you want to say. It's like, I can go on and go on and on. That's fantastic.